That's not it. Go. Baki, do you can do you see the shared screen? Do you see the 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 file in front of the desktop? Yes. Right now, I have the um, the welcome. Yeah. Good. And then on the side, I have what do I do? Uh, you and okay. Doctor Lassen, Albertine. And Sounds good. Someone else. Yeah. Why do I do I need do you, to? Would message? would do you would like to? Would you read that paragraph? It's a good introduction. Which one? The us. welcome or the, the, the fear? The Charles Eisenstein quote. Okay. Okay. Fear, along with addiction, depression, and a host of physical ills, flourishes in the terrain of separation and trauma. Inherited trauma, childhood trauma, violence, war, abuse, neglect, shame, punishment, poverty, and the muted moralized trauma that affects nearly everyone who lives in a non-monetized economy. Yeah, and goes, mm -hmm. What? Yeah, good. Monetize it. Monetize, sorry. <laughs> and there goes modern schooling or lives without community or connection to place. This terrain can be changed by trauma healing on a personal level, by systemic change toward a more compassionate society, and by transforming the basis narrative of separation, the separate self in the world of other. Me separate from you. Humanity separate from nature. To be alone is a primal fear. And modern society has rendered us more and more alone. But the time of reunion is here. Every act of compassion, kindness, courage, or generosity hears us from the story of separation. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So we, well, on this, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, perfectly. Okay. Yeah, so we, on this welcome, uh, page, I uh, just, I read something by this uh, Charles Eisenstein, and I'd read him before. Uh, he has got some, always some really nice insights. And this one here about the story of separation just sounded like a really good way of understanding uh, personal, individual, societal, uh, species separation. And of course, our circle guide here in New Mexico, Baki, uh, she always tells us no separation. And so I thought, so she's read that out. And if you can, if you can have that, look at that later, if you, if you have a chance. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, we can get started. Now, can everyone see the full screen of the shared screen? Yeah, good, good. And um, absolutely. I'll have to, I'll have to put the speaker screen a little bit lower for me. Okay. So we'll start with this idea. Well, we're looking at the idea of separation. So keep this idea of separation, but very specifically, we'll be looking at the idea of thinning the membrane. So the membrane is the barzakh, and the barzakh is, uh, is defined in the imagery of the barzakh for Ibn Arabi is often the curtain of the shadow play. So this membrane, this fabric, uh, is the place uh, flush or square against which the images of the divine are projected. And so the membrane, the barza, the shadow plays curtain, the projection screen. And of course, this is also connected to mythal, the, this, the likeness or the projected likeness. And so the thinning of the main membrane is the idea of getting closer, the two sides get closer and closer. So from Quran, the two sides, you know, they clash, but they do not, they do not cross over. They do not cross over. There's a separating line or a separating membrane between the two uh, seas or oceans. And uh, so the thinning of the membrane is when these oceans become closer and closer. And so uh, thinning is then this idea of, of what happens when we can see, in a sense, outside of the curtain in which we are enveloped. 
So as we saw last week, the Ein Wahda, the single entity, is divi gets divided into two. So this imagery of splitting and of cleaving and of uh, becoming two is something that runs throughout uh, all of our languages. And it's because it's a very powerful uh, bodily metaphor for how things work. That separation is necessary for something to happen. And then you want to find out how to bring things together. So separation, union, union, separation, all of this is the flow then of life. And so the Ein Wahda, the single entity, splits at the cosmic throne into the two feet. And these two feet then are do and don't do. These two feet, uh, rather than thinking of them as duality, um, Marifa in Colorado has taught me to look at those as polarity. So what the two sides, the two feet, are poles, are pol it's polarity, not duality. And so this Ein Wata splitting into two. The split into two uh, geometrically is this diameter. And so, the, and so Ibn Arabi actually has, and uh, I noticed Stephen is here, I'm gonna have to ask Stephen to see if he can find me that uh, from the manuscript, uh, the exact uh, drawing that Ibn Arabi has there. This is the separator, the fasl, which is the barzak or the membrane. And then there is the khalq, the creation, and there is haq, the true. So this imagery of the diameter is throughout, it's from chapter one all the way throughout the futuhat. It's one of the very rich metaphors and images that Ibn Arabi uses. And specifically, he begins to look at this image of this split and this circle with the diameter, he looks at it in the context of archery. And so <clears throat> the two arcs become bow arcs. So those are like the, the bow. And I've got here this nice, the Japanese bow, the asymmetrical bow. And these bows uh, have a string in between. So you have a string with an arc and another arc. And of course, this also very evocative is the, the black stone, the, the, what the black stone looks like. And it's more and more evocative, and I won't go farther that way. Every time Ibn Arabi has something, an image like this to speak about, he says, I won't say anything more about this, unless someone who has you know, something on his head uh, will uh, misunderstand me. So, uh, but of course, this, this, I mean, this is how he tries to speak to us about sexual matters. The two bows then are this idea of bow length or nearer. And so if we look at this other, uh, when, the, when, the, when the circle with its bow string, when, those, when the bow comes, it is, out, is, is stretched out like this and then comes in flat, it flattens. So the bow, when it's completely drawn, is this beautiful arc. And then when the release takes place, this bow flattens out and enters too close to where the string is. And in fact, the string, uh, you know, comes all the way to the, to the bow on the release and the, and the string itself bangs the bow and the bow begins to vibrate and the bow flips to the other side. So if you have a very good grip in Kudo, then when you release the bow, you hold it open like this, the bow spins itself around and then you hold it still. And then you bring the bow back and it's already in position. And if you don't have such a good grip, uh, the bow has to be turned around to get back into position. So this vibration of coming close to the string is what Ibn Arabi is going to be looking at here. And of course, this a circle with a diameter has two bows. And so one bow is entering close to the string, the other bow is entering close to the string. Okay. And now let's see if I can read this for you all. Uh, yeah, I have to put this over here. Okay, sorry. You know, let's work out. And this is the other imagery of these bows coming closer and closer to each other. And we saw that, we looked at that as it's asymmetrical. It's not symmetrical, just like these bows are not symmetrical, precisely because that when the top bow comes 
a certain distance, the bottom bow comes twice as fast. And when the, the top bow is coming at a medium pace, the bottom bow is coming up at a fast pace. I spent a, a day trying to figure out how to graph that to know with no success. It's a little bit like the calculus of gradients, and so therefore it's, uh, there are graphs that do things like that, but I couldn't figure it out. And as now you'll understand, of course, that I'm saying when my slave approaches me a, uh, a hand span, this span, I approach an arm span. So the top bow is coming down this distance, and the bottom bow is coming up to meet the string at this arm span distance. And when my slave approaches at an arm span, I think it is still, then I approach at the fathom, the two arm stance, the, the double yard. And so the, the rate of change of these two bows approaching the middle string, the separator, the barzak, is asymmetrical. So he, and he writes about this in one of, the, one of his poems, he's writing about the sud, the letter sud. And, uh, he's, and someone comes to him and has a dream about the Sud. And in that dream, Ibn Arabi, he sees Ibn Arabi lying down on his back. And Ibn Arabi says, at that point, I was very pleased to hear. Because lying on your back and looking up at the stars or looking up at the horizon, this is what the prophets did. So I learned that the prophets prefer to sleep on their backs because of their knowledge that everything facing their faces is the far horizon of who. You see, the face faces only the horizon, the far horizon. Now, when there, now then, there is a horizon which is lower, that is nearer to the earth, and there is a horizon which is higher, and it is what faces your face when you are lying down on your back. Now, we'll come up in a minute and look at that as a, as a geometrical description. And when the tajalli, this brilliant radiance, in various images, radiates brilliantly, limit and measure are involved. So that's there, there's sizing going on. The near is made nearer during this process. When the line, the diameter of those two circles, of the, of the two arcs itself, by which the circle is divided into two halves, reveals the two bow arcs, which are a nearing one to the other. This is the first nearing. The second nearing is the line-based nearing, which is nearer than the jugular vein. And Qurba here is also Qurban, the sacrifice. And nearer to the jugular vein is when the membrane is, is so thin, then, then God says that I am nearer to them than their jugular vein. Now this idea of that something is coming, that the prophets and the people who emulate them are lying down on their backs, waiting for things to come to them on the, the, the lower horizon and on the upper horizon. This can only make sense, this doesn't make sense in, in a three-dimensional world. Um, where, where is something coming in a three-dimensional world? It either comes from up, down, back, forth, left or right. And so it's coming from somewhere else. Well, it's coming from somewhere else in a higher dimensional uh, realm. It's coming through that higher dimensional realm and becoming uh, in a three-dimensional realm where we are now. And so we've looked at the sphere projects a shadow of a circle. So if you have a ball, you've projected the, the, the shadow on the wall, you get a circle. <clears throat> and what we're looking for is what is touched or hit with light and projects and makes a sphere, makes a ball in this three dimensions. And one answer is a four dimensional sphere, a hyper dimensional sphere. And so in a hyper, and so in a hyper dimensional sphere, this three dimensional world that we're in is uh, a surface. So now go back to the sphere. The sphere projecting onto the to the wall makes a circle, and so the 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 surface. This idea of the surface. If we're on a three dimensional surface, then we can't leave the surface, the ball. If no matter how far we go out, in, back, forth, left, or right, and so we have there. Are, but there are still places where this tajali comes down from or into, 
And so this is described as the horizon. Okay, so. Now this thinning of the membrane is what uh, we want to look at here now. Well, first uh, we'll talk about the thinning of the membrane. Let me, uh, the hadith that we have up here, I heard messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, indeed God has entered into the garden three because of an arrow. The arrow maker, aware of the good recompense for making the arrow, the shooter of it, and the one handing the arrows to the shooter. Not frivolous are only three. The man teaching his horse adab, the adib, so training the horse, playing with his wife, and shooting with his bow. So the, we'll go back down to this corner, the khairiyat nawafil. These are the good deeds that are uh, over and beyond, the obligated deeds. And this idea of the good deeds being over and beyond, this is the, this is the process by which the divine loves us. And then when we approach one hand span, the divine approaches one arm span. And so this is the two bows coming together. The membrane stretches and becomes thin and thin and thin. And the two parties are coming closer and closer to each other, one much faster than the other. And these are called the extra good deeds or the khairiyat al-nawafil. And so Ibn Arabi always quotes, when he quotes these khairiyat, these good things, these good deeds, he quotes, uh, Abu Hanifa, the, the Hanafi uh, fiqh uh, leader, imam, as saying that sex is the best of all of the khairiyat. And so we're beginning to be looking at training horses, sex, and archery. We've got to figure out how come Ibn Arabi is putting these images all together. So the khairiyat nawafil are things that stretch and thin this membrane. And so in in a sense, you can start with what we do is on, on the path when we are practicing and training ourselves is that we do good things, which are all listed in the, in the law, listed in the Sharia. So the, all this long list of good things, starting with sex and going down all the way through all of the different kinds of things that we can do, all the charities, all the smiles, the good words, all these things which thin this membrane. And at some point on the path, with, uh, after much training, you can begin to identify the khariyat, the good things, by the thinning of the membrane. So when you see the membrane thinning, you experience the membrane thinning, then you can look at what was, what was I doing that thinned that membrane. And that then is a definition of khariyat as well. A second def uh, the second thinning of the membrane that we can look at now is this word haya and uh, the, our editor in France is saying that this is such an important word that just cannot be translated into English. Uh, we're going to have to use the word haya in the text and haya is, is uh, often looked, uh, expressed as you know embarrassment or shame or modesty and of course none of this is, is doesn't really work at all um, but it's such a crucial word and uh, tessa has a as her teacher is in in indonesia and on the, his website he has this that the hadith that the prophet sallam, says that all religions have their characteristic virtues and the characteristic virtue of islam is haya so it's telling us how important that is haya i'll give you an example uh, of what haya, the opposite of haya is. So if I come into a, there's a line or queue and I butt my way in uh, and people look around and say, dude, there's a line, there's a queue. Uh, that's the opposite of haya because what it's doing is saying that my needs are more important than everyone else's needs. So haya is the effacement of this, uh, the idea that my needs are better than other people's needs. So it is definitely something that says no separation. There's no separation between my needs and other people's needs. And there's no hierarchy of my needs over other people's needs. And in the Alahis, we sing those who lose their heads uh, with the, under the flashing sword of, of love. And losing the head, uh, this is, Ibn Arabi keeps telling us that Abu Madian used to tell him 
that of course no one enters the garden with a sesame seed of arrogance or privilege or separation i'm better than other people and so what happens in the dunya what happens in this world if you are fortunate is that so many things happen that convince you that you're not the center of the world that convince you that you're not better than anyone else and that convince you that you're not your needs are not above anyone else's needs so it's actually a fortunate thing to have this happen to us uh, and our heads get cut off and when our heads get so so cut off then uh, we begin to enter into a position where these are the way the people will go into the garden. And the, uh, the other is that the, the people who are the most populous in the garden are the simple-minded people. And today it's, they're called, it's, 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 a, it's a bad thing, like retarded or mentally challenged, whatever. But really the word is simple-minded. And these are people who, are, who do not hold on to things that happen to them. People do bad things to them. Uh, tease them, throw rocks at them, and they don't hold that. They, they let that go. And they let that go because they are in a position which they're the ones who are going to be the biggest population in the garden. Now this third one, I was hungry and you fed me not. Ibn Arabi uses the, the commentary on that or the explanation of that but when, because the person says, how can I feed you? You're the Lord of the worlds. And so the answer is, if you had fed so-and-so, you would have found me there with him. So when you do this charity, when you feed this person, you find God there. And this is another way of looking at our imagery of thinning the membrane. So the distance between you and the divine is very, gets closer and closer and closer as you are feeding this person. So this is how charity brings the divine very fast and you not so fast together into this membrane. And this third, I descend to the sky of your world in the third part of the night. And this is when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, you wake up at four o'clock in the morning, you're completely awake. At that moment, the beloved is ready to speak to you. And so Ibn Arabi has this beautiful chapter. Uh, it's our, our friend in Albuquerque, Abdul Salam. It's his favorite chapter. And it's got this long, beautiful uh, poem, in a sense, from the divine saying that, you know, when I come to see you at night, I find you asleep. And, and, you, and so I've come to visit my beloved, and I find you asleep. And so uh, after reading that chapter, you kind of wake up a little bit in the night and say, uh oh, I better be ready for this. And then, then God says, and I find, and, then, and if you're awake, I'm here to talk with you. I leave the day for you. I leave the day for you. That's for your business and your friends and your family. But I have the night for myself. The night belongs to me. And this is when I can be alone with you. And so don't spend the night reciting the Quran because I will recite the Quran for you in your language. And I will tell you what I meant by that verse and that verse. So this is the special moment of the third part of the night. And it's the part when the cherisher, the rub, the cherisher says, is there anyone asking for something that I can answer? Is there anyone turning to me so I can turn to them? Is there anyone asking for forgiveness so I can forgive them? So this is a very special time when your prayers are coming through a very thin membrane. You're saying, I need this, I need this, I need to turn to you, I need your forgiveness, I need you to uh, restore me. That that moment, the membrane is thin and the divine rub is close. The other two places that this closest takes place is the deathbed. And we are nearer to him than you are. And so when you are attending a dead person, a person dying on the deathbed, you are so close, but the divine says, I am closer to this person dying than you are. So this is, again, a thinning of the membrane, bringing the two parties closer and closer together. Then birthing. Uh, birth is another time. And so birth and death often happen during this thin membrane time of the 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning birthing and so the birth process itself is a very thin membrane and Ibn Arabi has this one beautiful passage therefore it is appropriate for the people of careful watch 
that their commencement into the entrance of this world be for acquiring this very quality, that is, careful watchfulness. And so they study carefully the states of their mother. So his imagery is that the Arafin, the mystics, the guides, the ones who know these things, the moment they are born, they turn back and they look at their mother, and they look at the Mother Earth. And so Mother and Mother Earth are the first place that they turn in order to know, to learn. And so they watch carefully the state because their mother wants them to succeed. And this means succeeding in, in crossing the bridge of life, a successful crossing of the bridge of life. Okay. So this, the archery uh, imagery of, this, of the thinning of the membrane, the stretch, and then the string comes and the, and the membrane is thin, thin, thin. The two parties are very, very close. Uh, archery teaches us many, many things, just the way sex and teaching horses and other kinds of things teach us. And one of them is if you're in the woods and all of a sudden there's an arrow stuck in a tree going quivering like this. If you are someone who knows a little something about archery, you'll know that an arrow was shot from a long way away and it just hit here and it still has its energy. So in Kudo, the idea of, of the energy is that we have one kind of martial art, which is where the energy flows throughout your body and you direct your, body, your energy up, down, and to different places. Another part is you direct your energy to your extremities and then your hands and the feet become a, an, a packet of, of power. A third one is you direct your energy to an to a instrument, like a sword, and then your energy goes into this, uh, this other object. In Kyudo, your energy is going, is transferring from here to the target with no intermediary. So Kyudo, then archery, is our way of understanding be and it is. Kun faya kun. Because the sound kun, the imperative be, comes from very far away. It seems to be very far away. And there is no intermediary. We can't see it milepost one, milepost two, milepost three. It comes from somewhere and suddenly it's here and without passing through any kind of interme intermediary. So kun faya kun, be and it is, is the image of the archer. The archer puts all the energy into this bow and the, and the bow transfer the energy into the arrow and then without, with some who knows what happens in between? Suddenly, it hits the target, and it's quivering with the energy that came from the bow. So this is B, and it is. Okay. Um, so there are, these are these, we can find two modes that the divine works in the world, two ways that the divine works in the world. One is the Khalifa, and Khalifa from the Arabic is min khalf, so from behind. So the khalifa is the one from behind whom the action takes place. So the khalifa has someone behind who is the true actor, who is really doing what's being done. And the imagery for Ibn Arabi of the khalifa is this shadow play. So the puppet is, has something behind it that's making it reflect and hit this projection screen. And the key with, um, we'll get that I think next, the key to this Khalifa is that every image that's going to come from the divine, so that means every name and every adjective and every verb is going to be received and accepted by the shadow play, by the puppet. So the puppet is going to be able and have the capacity to receive every divine name, adjective, and verb, and then display that on the screen. And so this is, the, this is, why, this is how the Khalifa works. The Khalifa therefore has to be capable of all forms, capable of all receiving all names. And in this, when, when we first hear about the Khalifa in the Quran, the angels are saying, are you going to make someone in the earth 
who is going to spoil and pollute the earth and shed blood? And the answer is, I know something you don't know. And then the next answer is, Adam is taught all of the names. So being taught all of the names is becoming capable of receiving every name and displaying it on the screen. And this is the complete slave basis. And so Ibn Arabi says, therefore you are made an agent through the slave basis, and there is no allotment of master basis for this. You see, the Khalifa does not manage things on his own with any essential independence. No, one is in the hand of God and in the possession of God. And this is from on the yellow box, my slave draws near to me with nothing more beloved to me than what I have appointed for him. So this is the first drawing forth, the, the, draw, the root basic drawing towards the divine is by doing what you are told to do. So being charitable uh, and, 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 having, and, and doing what you're told to do, understanding, obeying, hearing, all of these things. And so this is the, the, the puppet, and this is the puppet show, this is the shadow, shadow play. A second mode is down here, the black and the red. When the two bows are coming and they come to the string, uh, and they do not cross each other. They keep themselves as two bows. So the, this bow stays and this bow stays. And this is, uh, Allah is the eye by which I see, one of the Allahis. And so the, when you say Allah is the eye by which I see, you are still here, the eye is still here, but the seeing is divine. So divine seeing in a human eye. And this is, you did not throw when you threw, but God threw. So your entity is accepted, not accepted, and then said something else is happening completely. And so that's, and my slave never ceases drawing near to me with charitable gifts until I love him. Then when I love him, I become his hearing with which he hears, and his sight with which he sees, and his hand with which he grasps, and his foot with which he walks. And if he asks of me, I surely provide to him. Uh, so I will get all oh, this going. Uh, let's just take a minute while I organize this. Okay. So let's look this word al mu'min. Uh, so right in the middle, you see the the Arabic al mu'min. It's transliterated al mu'min, the one who makes you safe, the one who gives you security the faithful one. So this is a name which can be called the mu'min haq, the, the divine mu'min, or the mu'min khalq, the creation mu'min. And here we have this, there are two passages with Ibn Arabi is we're out, way out in the, in the 20s, book 22 or six or something. And way out here, he figures if you're staying with him this long, he can now talk to you very directly. So uh, he said, now, if you ask, how would I know about myself, whether I am someone Kamal, completed? And Kamal is, you know, this, this, we're, to, we're always told in the Sufi path, you want to be Kamal, you want to, these, the great people are Kamal, are complete, perfectly complete. And Ibn Arabi, instead of, and you can imagine that when most students have said this, the teachers smacked them over the head probably. But for Ibn Arabi, he says, we say, God bless you for the question that you asked. Learn that indeed you, you will not know if you are square against the image unless you learn his, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, word, the mu'min is a mirror of one's sibling. The mu'min sees himself in his sibling's mirror, and the other sees himself in him. And this is only in the presence of the divine name al-mu'min. He said, indeed, the mu'minun are siblings, and the mu'min is many to his sibling, just as he is one to himself. So you learn that the divine names, all of them, are like the mu'minun. They are many siblings. So make peace among your siblings, meaning when they are discordant. For example, the exalter and the abaser, the harmer and the benefactor. There are many divine names which are discordant, which are not, <coughs> which are fighting, which are, <coughs> are need to have peace made between them. And the way the peace is made between them is that the Khalifa, the one who can take on all of these names, can take them on and keep them inside the body without 
either one of them winning or destroying the other one. So it can keep hold, it can hold, uh, <clears throat> what's that word, hold discordancy, hold the things that are opposites. And so the story that we need to learn more about these names, Ibn Arabi likes to tell this story about the names. They are first, when they are created, they are idle. They are idled and they have nothing to do. So the names gather together and the one names like Murid, the one who desires saying, my name is I desire, but I have no one to desire. And then, then they're told, well, let's go ask this next name. What's the situation? He said, well, my name is, is Qadir, and I'm powerful, but I have no one to power over. And they say, well, let's keep going. And they ask the name, the all-knowing, the Alim. And the, Ali, the all-knowing says, I hear your complaint, and I, too, am something that knows everything, but there is nothing out there for me to know. But there is adab, there is protocol. And the protocol is that we ask the all comprehensive name, Allah. So they go up to the all comprehensive name, Allah, and they give their complaint that we are idle, we are idled, we don't have anything to do. And so the all comprehensive name, Allah, says, wait here. And the all comprehensive name says, I have just been to the hadrat, the presence, and that's a feminine word. And I have been to the hadrat, and she says, it is time to create. So all of the creation begins to take place. And the moment the creation is taking place, all of the names now have something to do. And um, <clears throat> so let me re read this middle part. By means of these correlations, that is, we are the we are the creation of God, the slave of God. We are the one acting because of God. All of these cor correlations, we become the radiant sight of her, the izat ilahiya. So her that is not witnessed except in us on account of our being created square against the image of the divine. Thus we take possession of the divine names, all of them. There is no divine name, but we have with him, that name, some share, and no command ar arises through us, but its force flows in the root. The Prophet ﷺ said, when a limb of his experiences pain, the rest of the body assembles as a league with a fever. Now the word for idle, being idled, um, the reason that everything happens in this world and not just things we like, for instance, is because there are many, many names and these names are often discordant ones. So one name is exalting us and another name is abasing us. One is harming us, one is benefacting us. And so the reason that there are all these names is that they should not be idle. And the word for being idle in theology is ta'pil. And ta'pil also means a bow without a string. So a bow without a string is a, is nothing happens. The divine names are not shooting any arrows. There is nothing happening. And so bows need to have their strings. These strings then need to be pulled very far apart. The release, the string, the bow meets, the other party or the other bow meets, and we have the situation. So alhamdulillah there. And so let me get this I get one last slide, and then we can pause for some discussion. So polarity. And so polarity, uh, we'll look at this. Let, let me read this passage here right now. So Narabi says, if you wish to recognize your completeness, and look into yourself. So this, again, he's going straight into you all the time. And this is so unusual. You don't read classical Arabic and get you very often, but this is, uh, everything is you. We're looking, he's looking at you right now. In so if you wish to recognize your completeness, your being Kamal, then look into yourself in your commanding and your prohibiting. And your creative process with no intermediary tongue and no limb and no creative being other than you doing something. So if the performance is authentic in you, then you are upon a clarification from your cherisher and your completeness. And this is when you do something that should have this effect, another effect takes place. 
when you do something that should, should, should do something and then nothing happens. And then you do nothing and something happens. Or you do something that always does this, but only one time does it come out. And then you do something that only works one time and it always is working. So artists and creative people will recognize this right away. When you are in this situation where you try to organize this and something else happens. When you try to do this and something else happens. When you do nothing and something happens. When you do something and nothing happens. When you're in this situation, then you know you're in the situation of completeness. Okay? And this completeness takes place because you are capable of, all, of receiving all of these names. And this is an aggregate of names. So aggregate, all these little pieces, all these little pieces of elements are all there together inside you. And you want to become integrated. So Saleh in Arabic is integrated, where you take all the disparate parts and you make them work as one. That's integration. And integration is the amal salih, the deed which is integrated. When you do something that is integrated, the result is something good. And so an integrated thing, you might do this and something else happens. You might do that, not do anything and something happens. But this is, you're integrated, the result is going to be good. And that's because the hand of God is with the aggregate. And the hand's power will be done. This is why when the human being gathers himself together in himself, such that he begins to become a single thing, his inner energy passes through like an arrow and penetrates whatever he desires. This is a tasting collected together in the family of God who are pivots, the same word as kutub, who are pivots because the hand of God is with the aggregate. You see the, by the aggregation, the cosmos emerge visibly. And the desperate entities are nothing but who. So we go to the middle, become integrated, become truth, become the one. This is the, from the Allahi. Become integrated. Gather all the parts together, all the names and things that are coming through you. Gather them together. Stretch the membrane. Thin the membrane by approaching the divine with generous acts. And then Allah is the eye by which I see. And then teaching the horse, adab, ta'adib, training the horse, playing with your partner, shooting with the bow. Down here we have those, the way that this Ibn Arabi talks about the dimensions. That you have a, if you have a dot, and then you put another dot, 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 point, 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 soon zero dimension becomes one dimension. And so you have fractal dimensions all along the way until you have one. So dot, 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 point, point, point becomes a line. And then line, 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 becomes a plane. And then plane, 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 like the coins, each one is a plane, uh, becomes then a volume. And then volume, 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 until it becomes a hypervolume. And Ibn Ibrahim said, this is when the rows of the prayer, when everyone is uh, shoulder to shoulder, and we say shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart, when everyone is, is connecting together, they're becoming integrated. They're becoming as one. And the devils have no way to move in between them. So if the, if the devils are going through, then they are dissipating and they're breaking up the oneness. In the same way, if you're by yourself, you also pray as one. All of the disparate parts of you become together, become integrated, become one, and then you become a force of one. You become integrated. And when you become integrated, you are complete. And when you are complete, you are the second mode of how God works in the world. And then, of course, back to the bow, the vibrations, strings vibrate. Strings make no sound until they vibrate. Bows have no be and it is, no action until they have a string. And so, and, and, and waves and strings vibrating is polarity, up and down, back and forth. Electromagnetic waves uh, are light, all polarity. And so, because, and we might say, oh, I only like the good things, I don't like the bad things, or I only like the, the red things, I don't like the black things, I only like the big things, I don't like the small things. Uh, polarity is telling us that all of the good that comes, comes from this things that we like and things we don't like. It comes from 
up and down, back and forth, the, vo the bow string uh, vibrating, uncomfort to comfort and then uncomfort again. Uh, and so anything that we do that thins this membrane makes us like this twanging string, makes us, makes us sing like a string. So when we are with, our, with animals and we are, we are training them or interacting with them, those we are something is happening to us that we are learning that this membrane is thinning this is how things ought to be so when you if you have a dog and you play with the dog and and you watch you try to train them or you say come here and do this do that and you all these things this interaction is uh is a thinning of the membrane interactions with trees uh the prophet had a had a tree stump that he used to stand on and give the sermon and then one day the companions made him a nice wooden pulpit inside his house and he would stand on there and that's in the middle of a sermon they heard the tree stump uh, with a sound like a pregnant camel is the way it's described <laughs> or camel giving birth or whatever uh, a great moaning and so the prophet came out held on to the tree stump and reassured and solaced and, and comforted the tree stump and so interactions with minerals and plants and animals and other human beings, interact with playing with partners, shooting with the bows. These are things that are telling us what we want to know so that the membrane thins and this no separation begins to become a, a story of we are. Because when we are in these situations, we are, are we're not separate because we're not individualized. We're not, we're not a, a uh, just our ego or our self, something else happens, and then we become um, the the membranes thin, the separations thin and thin and thin, um, and we want to gather together as this aggregation because every part of it is who, and so can we integrate them so that we can be the second mode of divine action in the world. So alhamdulillah, I Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And uh, uh, we have a moment if people would like to, to say something. Yes, did someone have something? Yeah, go ahead. I think just go ahead and speak up. And, okay. Is that Rahmani? Yeah. So okay. with the Amobius strip image, mm -hmm. I just had the best time moving with it because mm -hmm. I find that for me, prayer activates more fully if I can move it. Yeah. And yeah. So I'm wondering with the bow or the the lines of uh, the the bow strings I'm not sure but I wonder if you have any ideas about how my body my arms my hands my head could mm -hmm. echo mm -hmm. the dynamic of of the approaching and the uh, and the quickly the slow approach and the quick response, anything along those lines, I would personally love that. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, well, last night, last night we had, had a vicar and uh, Latifa had us move through a couple different moves. And so this, this swaying <laughs> is so important. When, when, the, when, the, when we're reciting Torah, there, I forgot the name, is it called Shukul? Or, uh, there's a name that when, when you go like this for the Torah, and of course Muslim kids do that all the time, back and forth. Uh, there's something called bodily memory that if you have, if you, um, if you are reading a book at a certain situation, if you recreate that situation, you can remember the book. Um, and so bodily motions are so important. And most of these body, and, and, and we, now we talk, now sex is called rock and roll. So this, I mean, everything here is this whole idea of, of how our bodies move. <clears throat> And it's so far away from what the intellect says knowledge is because we're calling body knowledge that my body knows how to move and what to do. And so this body knowledge then becomes so very, very important for understanding how things work and why there is a body. And unlike, you know, and so, I mean, intellectuals kind of, you know, disparage the, the body. But for us, the body is, is this place. And, and we have the Allahi that my body is your paradise. We looked at that, I think, two weeks ago. This earth body uh, is the only place where all the divine names, we're capable of receiving all of the divine names. So earth then becomes everything. And so when we die, we want to keep our body here in the earth so that we can do all of our travels with ourselves in the earth because we never lose the earth. 
And then, and all metaphors, my mother always says this, all metaphors can be drawn back to the human body. So everything we talk about, every metaphor image that we talk about is bodily first. So it's absolutely crucial. And so for someone like me, you know, growing up and told, don't move, you know, and, and, and a lot of, when I was a kid, the only way you could have any kind of bodily contact is to go hit somebody or to go play, you know, play rugby and grab everyone and jump on them. So uh, this whole, but this is where things are, are, are taught. It's through the body. And, uh, and so you can say, this is one reason why many times men have to ask women for advice because women have a first bodily experience that they can remember very strongly. Um, and men tend to say, move out of the body. So embody, rebody, and Habiba's website uh, in Germany is open space embodied. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of, uh, okay. Okay, I, I'm supposed to mute everyone I mean, until you unmute yourself. Okay, good. And yeah, and <clears throat> let's just very quickly, the, why the divine names uh, want to act. And so the divine names uh, are idled. They have no string in the bow. And so they have, I'm desiring, I'm murid, and I have nothing to desire. Um, I am knowing, but I have nothing to know. And so the, the, the fundamental desire to be and to do and to act uh, is something that is that we get from the divine names because the divine names themselves want to be and want to act and want to do. And my body is your paradise means that and those divine names don't have anywhere to act unless there is an earth based form which is capable of receiving it. So. And a training of the horse. Yeah, training of the horse is, of course, you can make a metaphor with the training of the nafs, but you can also keep it way back into uh, the training of the horse. And, and many, uh, we're here in New Mexico, and a lot of uh, the, the, the First Nations or, the, or, or indigenous people or tribal peoples, uh, they still you know, love the horse. And uh, we also have here in northern New Mexico, the Spanish love of horses, and which comes from an Arab love of horses and the Spanish Arab love of horses, all of these things. There is something very special about the horse. And there is something very important to learn about the horse. Um, okay. Oh, and okay. Yeah. And Yusuf came. Good. Yeah. And anything else? I'm, I'm open. Go ahead. Uh, professor, may I ask a question? Yes, Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, my name is Mehdi from California. I met you a few years ago in Sheikh Fariha's Dargah. You were presenting your first chapters of this book. Uh, that evening was excellent and uh, impressive uh, lecture or presentation you gave. So was last week's class and today's class. My question, actually I have three questions. I'll start with this one. In the middle of the presentation or class, you mentioned that at night when you're asleep, he comes to talk to you and the third part of the night is the best time. Now, when I was reading this a few years back in the book, uh, it came to me that there's two ways of seeing this night. One is the actual physical night when it's dark and we're asleep. The other one is the night of the mind. When I'm in my mind, it's almost like a night and uh, the, the light of divine, the light of presence seems like is not there. For example, with the events of these days, when I turn on the news and CNN, this, that, that, I'm totally in the night what's going to happen. And when I'm doing my meditations, my weird, my zikr, and coming to presence, coming to what I'm saying, all of those go away. All the worries, everything goes away. It seems like I'm moving from the night to the dawn or to the morning. And really the third part of the night is when all the worries are fading away little by little. And I'm feeling like I'm getting happiness. I'm getting inspirations. Everything is going to be okay. He's in charge. Be, be, have certainty. So which night is this? Is it the physical night or is it the spiritual 
night of mind versus day of divine and spirituality. Okay, Bismillah. Uh, Yasheka has some, some naked grandchildren running around. <laughs> uh, yeah, with all the metaphor is very interesting. Ibn Arabi keeps using the word etibar. Etibar is the crossing over the arroyo. And the thing about metaphor for Ibn Arabi is that both sides uh, stay solid or stay real. No collapsing of one into the other. So the Zahir and the Batin, the outward commands of the law and the inward commands of the law, that, that everything we do outwardly has an inward meaning. Um, but the inward meaning doesn't take away from the outward. And so the Bataniya, the people who try to collapse one side, they'll say, well, if Zakat is uh, purifying myself, then I don't actually have to give any of my wealth to anyone because I can just purify myself. And so that's trying to collapse one end and just have the inward end. Um, and so Ibn Arabi says, well, all these metaphors, outward and inward. So, so when, if you find meaning from an outward, you find that meaning, uh, but you also make sure you keep the, the outward as well, the inward and the outward together, keep them both at the same time. And so, and this is of course, the, the beauty, beauty of Ibn Arabi is this very body-based, um, body-based, physical, sensed uh, kind of way of looking at the world and understanding that meanings are, are projected from the body, but that doesn't negate the body or doesn't allow the body to collapse. And so uh, this, the, the, the feel, and the, but the feeling that you get is when light rushes into some place, it disperses all of the things that were, that were desperate and, and, were, and were not helpful, were not integrated. So it pushes things out so that there's clarity. So the light then becomes this clarity. And clarity then is like ghee. So the way you take butter and you see how physical and <laughs> we're still very material here. So butter, you take the butter and you, and it melts it. And as it melts, a, a white foam comes. You take that white foam and you take it off and you take it off and you take it off. And in the end, you have purified butter, you have ghee. And so clarification is what light does. Light takes off the froth so that the clarified uh, explanation, uh, the clarified truth is there. And so integration is how you clarify things. Integration is how you put all the things that need to be here into one spot. Everything else can go away. And then you become a, you become ghee, you become like butter. And so you just, and you become integrated. So this is what is the very physical way. It, and it's, so it's absolutely true that that's how you make ghee. And it's absolutely true that that's how you purify your soul both <laughs> i understand i'm not sure if i have time for my second question <laughs> uh, if someone is asked something pressing i will we'll go to question two okay give us question two let's see okay my second question has to do with uh last week's class and this week's class just before the, this week's class, I was reviewing my notes in my notebook. I have four pages of notes from last week and about six pages from today. Uh, in the beginning of last week's class, you mentioned that in the herbal or medicinal shop, the expert or the sheikha or sheikh gives you the medicine that you need. You cannot take all the medicines and uh, you kind of use that analogy for the uh, divine names, for the most beautiful names that the Sheikh gives you according to your life situation and uh, what you need, the appropriate name. Uh, today, you mentioned that, um, I'm looking kind of in the middle of your class, you mentioned that um, the righteous or, or the RF brings all the names to me it seemed like he's tasting all the herbs together in himself and then i was looking at the beginning of last week's notes and you were saying that bringing all these names in one person could cause indigestion and problems how do you explain this so i can understand better 
Yeah, that's that's the whole constitution idea. Uh, Ibn Arabi tells us that there are, there are people who have different comp different constitutions, stronger constitutions, and they can eat quite a lot of things and still handle everything. Um, in fact, because they have a light, the light, heat and light is, is, is your digestive process. And because they have great light, they can digest all sorts of things. The rest of us, or, and me, uh, much more sensitive to things that don't fit my constitution. And so there's that. Uh, the second is that when uh, integrate is, is integration is that if you look in the mirror, he's saying that the mu'min looks in the mirror, and if you are using the word mu'min, that is safe and secure, then you are able to hold the discordant names. So that is that you hold them without, and, and now what happens next depends on what kind of mirror you're looking at. If your mirror is very clear, and the because the mu'min is uh, the one on top of the other, each brick that makes the solid wall. And the moment is the mirror for the movement. All of these things. So if the mirror is in a very clear state, you can hold discordant names, opposite names, and then display whatever needs to be displayed, but that you can hold them. Uh, if the mirror is not very clear, it's very difficult to hold these opposite names. But the one other thing, the way that, that these special people can act is that you take a name like Mania, the one who forbids or prohibits, and you think, oh, that sounds like it's not very helpful and not very good. But what if you are forbidding cells that are not good for the body from reproducing? And, uh, and so, uh, a, a, and then death and, and life, uh, cells that don't die, uh, that's called a cancer. And so life, is and death they, they there are it's time there are times and its places in every all the way to the cellular level so that's why we're given names and those names are specific to our constitution which are going to help us at this moment and those who have great great constitutions they can hold many things at once thank you okay Assalamu alaikum, Brother Shahib. I don't know if you're noticing that there's a note in the chat that Sheikh of Fariha has something to oh, share. Oh, okay, okay. Let me look, let me look. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I'm ready to read it. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Shahib. This is part of the, the enormous gift of this time that we can all uh, sit and receive this uh, mutually. So um, I wanted to ask you um, about that state where you said, you know, that you intend this, but this comes. So you try the, the normal um, avenues of cause and effect, and, but they're always different. So, um, but how, is that like a, a transitional state? In other words, to, it sounds like, but maybe it's not. It's beyond that. It sounds like, you know, something to completely confound the soul or to bring you into bewilderment. Because how do you um, see that? And then the himma, you know, of the friends of God, where exactly it says that, you know, what you intend or what you desire comes about. So I just wanted you to maybe clarify. The the way I'm not on mute because uh, I got a lot going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this actually the well, I came I came to that passage just before I was uh, coming to visit the Darga um, for the I think the second time and uh, or the first time and what had happened is a few days before uh, I had gone out to our forest here with my father. My father is uh, Estonian and German. And uh, he wanted to be a forester in Germany uh, until the war came. And so, but we went out and there was this huge, huge tree. And of course it, it, it had been not growing as a plant for many years. So it's going to make perfect firewood. And so I uh, did, you know, lots of fatihas, lots of bismillah and, and really working with this tree, absolutely huge tree. And uh, so I, would, I was coming in and doing three different cuts on each side, trying to put everything together. And at one point I had a V, the V shape is this, so the, you have a V shape and the tree goes this way, right? So I had the V shape there. 
And this V shape was very, very deep. It was like three quarters of the way into the tree and nothing was happening. And I asked my father and he said, I've never seen anything like this. And so we then, uh, so then I went to the Darga the next day, uh, flew to the Darga and uh, all sorts of you know, amazing things happened again that were out of my, uh, my, my control or, or just think beautiful things were happening. And when I got back on, I think Tuesday, um, so I started walking out and I said, I wonder what happened to the tree all this time. And so as I'm walking out, I hear kick, 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 and this tree, ba boom, it hits and it goes across the arroyo and just, it's the biggest, I've never seen such, had that much noise in one place. It was amazing. And so, and then what had happened is that it actually, instead of falling this way, it fall exactly the other way. So my my moves were to have it fall this way and my design was to have it fall this way and it falls the other way and my design was that if you cut a tree that deep it's going to fall but it didn't fall and so i did nothing and then it fell and so uh this it, it gave me this it, a full picture of doing nothing and something beautiful happens but and then doing something and the opposite happens uh doing something that ought to work and nothing works uh, so, so this is this is in a sense when you're in that state, uh, you you begin to see that something else is happening. You're being directed, you're being guided. Something else is happening that 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 Allah wants something to happen, and you're just watching it happen with this hand or that hand or whatever it, whatever it's going to be. So it's in a sense it's uh, it's when if we come to the place where I am not in control and that. When I do A, B won't necessarily happen. If I can come to that state, then B can, then something beautiful can happen. And uh, this happens all the time when we're organizing something with Bhakti. We organize and make all these things, and then something completely different comes about, which was better than the thing that we thought we're going to make. So, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Out of time, but I wanted to just ask is that then a sign for the thinning of the membrane? Because you said earlier to look at what was I doing when the membrane was thinning, is that an example of that? Yeah, it, so as I just thought this this morning, the, the, the thought came that, that we have a long, long list of what the uh, what these good deeds are, these hariyat are, and they and all of them. When you look at them, you can see, oh, all of them actually thin the membrane, make this experience take place. Um, and so at one point, uh, you can say, I watch the thinning of the membrane and I'll know what was a good deed. And so thinning of the membrane, the feeling is, uh, is, the, is, the, is the softening of the heart. The, and then Ibn Arabi talks about the, there's a skin around the heart. And when that skin uh, shakes and vibrates, uh, the heart expands. And so uh, this, 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 the, it's a kind of a shimmering uh, skin of the heart. When that one's moving, the heart expands and things happen and it softens. And so these are the things, and that of course the first, one of the re responses, tears well up. And so tears well up from behind. Uh, and this is the, the, the membrane has thinned, the skin of the heart has been thinned, the heart has been polished. And so it's often associated with pain because if polish, you, to polish something, you have to take something that hurts. You have to take rocks and rub them or sand and rub them on the glass or the metal. And so it's something that's painful. It's either in you or it's a painful thing that you see. And so uh, when the Prophet ﷺ held the child who was dying, that, uh, the pain of that was brought tears, that's Rahma. And he told his companion that that's Rahma. And so all of those things which make the heart softer the skin to be more translucent of the heart so that the heart sees better because all the tajellis are coming to the heart so the heart if it has a thick skin the heart can't see out very well but if it has a thin skin a translucent skin then the person begins to glow and then uh, make me light is the the dua of the prophet sallallahu so make me light make this glow uh, throughout the body and so that the whole body might the hands will begin glowing and all the parts of your body begin to glow. And so this is the thinning of the membrane of the skin of the heart, the polishing of the heart, the softening of the heart, and the, the, the curtain which we are in, the shadow play which we are in, this surface of Mother Earth, um, 
we, it's, it's thinning that as well. So it's coming closer to Mother Earth because the, the Mother Earth is, is, is helping us block the light so that the light can be seen and, be, and receiving names. So it's coming close to Mother Earth. So when we put our head, we put the th part that we think is our greatest part, our brain, we put the brain and the nose. And in Arabic, you, have, you stick your nose in the air. So you have the nose and the, and the forehead touching Mother Earth. And when, when they touch Mother Earth, Ibn Arabi says that's a healing for Mother Earth. And it's a healing because the membrane has thinned and the, the arrogance of, the, of humanity touches uh, the, the receptive beauty of Mother Earth. And this is a healing for not just Mother Earth, of course, but for us as well. And so this is, this is how the Chariot works. And so if you look at, you study all of the, the good acts, the good behaviors, you'll find them all to have this, this thinning of the membrane, tears are often associated. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, in the end of my life, I cried more than I laughed. In the beginning, I laughed more than I cried. So, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikha. Um, so, Shweb, I wanted to clarify when we talk about no separation in our circle, it is in a way of thinning the layers because as a, the work, as I understand the work of a dervish, is to uh, eliminate all the false assumptions of who we are, all the cultural assertion, the family assertion and really eliminate projections we have and judgments, not only towards other people, but who do we assume we are, which is most of the time, unfortunately, coming from the limited self. So, uh, so in, in uh, that process of constantly watching where we identify with um, whatever we had, we have, you know, we come from our cultural inheritance, and that really separates us from the true self, from the who, actually. And so, in that sense, it's um, for Ramadan, for example, the true fast is to eliminate those um, those there. Then, so it is getting closer, inshallah, of the true, the divine uh, light that we each are, and finding the uniqueness of. Mm -hmm who the, does Allah really wants us to be. So that is, to me, the no separation, you know, and, the, and our work as uh, dervishes to try to as much as possible unfold what Allah has designed for us to be. Yeah, yeah I think, well, that's, uh... Uh, Hatika was talking about khidmat, that the idea of service, and then we talked about that also with the dervishes and how service is the is the is the main thing that the the dervish does, and service is khidmat. Uh, it's it's that I was hungry and you fed me not, but you're the Lord of the universe. But if you had fed so and so, you would have found me there with him. And so service is the, you you do service and then you find what what you what then you find the divine. And Ibn Arabi says this gives two stories about that. One of course is Hajar uh, when she is looking for water for her son. And so she's not looking for herself. She's looking for water for her son. And as she and as because it's for her son, she then finds Zamzam. And then Musa alayhi salam that when Moses is going out looking for fire for his family for the tribe he goes out and he sees a burning bush and that's and he's oh there's a burning bush that's good because i need fire and so when he goes to the fire he finds god and so you find god by serving and and doing something for another and so moses didn't go out looking for god and hajj did not go out looking for zamzam but that's what was given uh, to them and so and so this is our 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 encouragement to service is that that service is how we get to where we want to be. So it's it's in, instead of, uh, you know, how can I be a better person? It's just like, well, how can I serve someone? And then as how can I serve someone? The answer will be that's how you become a better person. So thank you, Baki. <laughs> Hello, uh, Dr. Winkle. I don't know whether you're able to hear me. It's, um, I, 
I wonder if you can see me. Hi. Yeah, I can now see you. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. It's a, my first time uh, I've, I've come to, I, I don't know how this invitation came, but <laughs> subhanAllah it came. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, your, your, I, I've used some of your stuff to explain things um, in, in some of the lectures I've given in places. Uh, I, have, I have a love for uh, prime numbers. Right. And, <laughs> so, and, Ma and, Mandel, and Mandelbrot zooms and so on right. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that over the years, uh, the, the journey is not so much about I mean, I, I, this is just a reflection. <laughs> um, the journey is not so much about trying to find out what do you have to do. Yeah, it's not so much about what do you have to do. What will you do to perfect yourself? Mm -hmm. That seems like a that seems like a um, a very um, a contradictory state mm -hmm. because who who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but rather. It's about, it's about um, uh, w which you mentioned right in your, your first chap chapter when you're talking about the who and who we are, vis-a-vis Sheikh al Akbar. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's about first taking that breath, you know, being, uh, and then, and the rest of it is a validation, it seems, that you're on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it it seems like it's all about the validation that you are you are you know on that sirat al mustaqim if you may say so yeah yeah uh, very it good be, yeah it could be one way it could be one way of seeing things because it's the other way of course is that you're looking but you arrive at that place perhaps of sirat al mustaqim by seeing the world outwardly you know um, and then you arrive at that place to realize this, or you start from the breath itself, and then you arrive. You, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit like starting, you know, with haqiqa, arriving at sharia. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, which, uh, and whichever direction it goes, you arrive, right? Yeah. And, that, and yeah. so Ibn Arabi, when he takes that circle, he, he goes back to the circle in chapter one, and he says, yeah. whatever point you're on, because if you want to get to God, you have to leave the surface of the circle. Uh, yeah. you can't just keep going around the circle and he says but you go around because that's what we're doing we're going around this that's circle good. yeah but uh, it, it, that's not getting us closer to God and that's why every breath is a path to Allah that every breath has is one unit away from where the breath came from whereas in the circle where there's thousands of miles that we can travel <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> I'll do that. Thank you very kindly. I, I hope I get the next uh, next link. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead and go to go to thefutahat.com, and and uh, and if you register the email there, Mustafa will have will get the email. Okay. And I think uh, and next week. Well, we'll and so be emailing me also about what you would like to look at next week. Uh, I think the month of Ramadan is very close. Uh, we may do something with, with that. Ibn Arabi has some beautiful images coming from the month of Ramadan. But uh, go ahead and email me your ideas and, and let's see what, what gets inspired. <laughs> Would you mind p uh, putting that uh, link down somehow in there? I, I, I did, I'm, not, I'm not very good with the Arabic. <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, I, I know it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give a, a, a chat out. Uh, let me put... Let me put it down on, on chat. That way you'll get that. On the chat. Somebody put it on the chat already. Should I... Okay. So go ahead and look at the chat. Then uh, Omar Zain is saying that uh, it, it should be there already. Got it. Got Thank it. You. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, sorry, so, uh, I have been... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, on, uh, a few mentions came by on... on, on, on 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 how to how to approach how to thin the membrane and 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 something that I, I I'm associating with or I seem to be getting from different different mentions. Just wanted to to say that affirm it uh, not affirm it like like see if, if if I understood correctly is our action in getting nearer our action in integration that's the good word in integrating all the different names which have the contradiction is actually uh it is actually 
uh, passive. Our, we, we have to be active in being passive. Like, like our activity is silence. To silence our trying to find out how to balance all the infinite contradictions so that they balance themselves. So our only action is towards passivity. Does that sound right? Yeah, this, well, this is, Ibn Arabi keeps coming back to Ubudiyya, the state of the slave. And he said, this is how, this is how we are. And at one, the passage I'm just reading uh, yesterday, uh, book 29, so really moving fast here. But book 29, so he, talk, he tells the story. He says that if, when it comes to Ubudiyya, being the slave, he says, I don't think there's anyone who's more a slave than I am. And if they are, I would like to say that at least he joins with me. <laughs> so, I mean, and he, he's, because he's seen that, he's seen that it's when I don't do that everything happens. And then you become, and so it's it's a very beautiful state. It's a very it's a very beautiful state because you get to see uh, what's happening through the uh, through the divine eye. So the divine sees the way divine sees. That's the way you see. And Ibn Arabi is so special about always giving us the divine perspective because we're always looking at how, I'm looking at my perspective. You know, if I pray this, what happens? What happens? What happens? But it would be saying, well, from God's perspective, this is what God is seeing. And so that then suddenly things become very, very clear. And so it becomes the, the so the individual in the sense of that you, your individual self, the clay body that you are with the spirit that the Ruh of Allah that has been blown into it, that that unique individual is absolutely necessary, absolutely beautiful, and is, and is necessary to be there. There is no more perfect world. So if there's no better world, there's no more perfect world than this one, then there is no world that doesn't have Omar Zayn in it, because this is the perfect world. And so you are the way things have to be. So, so we, have to, we have to absorb that at the same time that we don't let our lower self absorb it because the lower self says, see, I told you I'm the greatest. I can butt in front of any cue that I want to. And that's the lack of Haya. So the teaching is how can you be told that you are the center of the world? You're absolutely important. There is no world that's better because you are in this world. At the same time, you say, I am the slave and God does what God does. <laughs> so so that, that's the training. That's why we have the, the guides, the teachers is how to how to do that in our life and and one of the ways that we do that is haya this that how can i find this 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 experience of haya so i don't prioritize myself or the other people i don't separate myself from other people by saying oh i'm so different yeah alhamdulillah thank you Omar. Okay, well, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to uh, any emails for ideas and so on, and uh, and please do that, and uh, and we'll. I think we have a system now where uh, Mustafa has this uh, male chimp. He gets a monkey to do his work, <laughs> and that, and that's the way that we can get emails out to everyone. And so, but do let me know what uh, I've got to. I've got to, you know, get the inspiration from you all to say this is what we need to hear next. And I'll, and I'll look for it and see what Ibn Arabi says. So thank you. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamd